because I mean, pro <clears throat> pro bodybuilders know. I mean, if you if if you really had to put a test in front of them, okay, okay, of okay, what should you do next? I guarantee you, nine times, nine and a half times out of ten, they would get the right answer. Yeah. But yes. it's more so just having that companionship of giving a confident, you know, answer to them. They 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 need that. I mean, I know like. Mm-hmm. Going back to, you know, you guys posted the picture of Dallas this morning. That was one of the biggest things that I was to Dallas was just like somebody that he could confidently depend on, yeah. um, you know, because I mean, a lot of the times it seemed like everything I did with Dallas worked like it, it didn't matter. Like it just worked. But yet behind the scenes, there was the mental struggles. There was the stress that he dealt with. There was the living up to expectations because of how quickly he was rising up the ranks. You know, like we dealt with all that on a day. I mean, I remember 2016 for the Olympia prep. It was like we had conversations almost every day to the gym the past four weeks of like, I don't know how, you know, like, I don't know how much longer I can handle this pressure or, or, or these expectations and, you know, just helping him navigate through that, you know, I mean, that was a huge part. I mean, that was like, I think my most important job, um, more so than giving him a diet or more so than making sure his fat levels were right. It was like more keeping him sane, you know, in, in the head. Right. So. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes being a coach is a lot like being a drummer. They say a good drummer has to know when not to drum. Yeah. And 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 that's always one of my favorite, you know, kind of m- metaphors for sometimes you just have to get out of an athlete's way as well. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, like I'm watching. Have you watched The Last Dance? I love it. I absolutely love it. So I'm not sure how far you are. I'm, I'm all caught up right now. Um, but there's that one line where they're talking about coaching Rodman in college. Mm-hmm. And the one coach is like <clears throat> working with him. And he's a really good defensive coach. Like he's he's a great coach and he's working on like, you know, boxing guys out and all this stuff. And the, the head coach calls him over and he goes, just leave him alone. You yeah. don't put a saddle on a Mustang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, accurate. don't worry about his technical shit. He's, he's a different breed. You let him do his aggressive, yeah. just let him go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, I feel like that's a little bit of what you – you know, I mean, I know you were there the whole time, but I sort of feel like that's what you had to do with Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, well, it was just again, it was just like it was being a backbone for him more than anything. You know, it wasn't <laughs> like, and yeah, there was times where like I think with Dallas, I actually we we changed his diet a lot because it was like he was gaining this muscle so fast, but the maturity of it wasn't there. So there was times where I mean, his full would look incredible, but his flat would look terrible it was too extreme in that you know because like he didn't have that mature muscle yet um so yeah like i was like navigating the diet and stuff like that but more than that it was just like being a, a voice of reason for him and yeah. um and then and then when it got to the gym it was just like it was letting him go you know do what you do yeah <laughs> yeah 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 try to just try to keep him safe right yeah <laughs> like i think I that that's one thing that people forget about and i know i've talked to chris about a lot is the most dangerous time as a coach is when things are going really, really well because you can't take your eye off the ball. That's when you have to like really be watching because you'll have months where you're just like, God damn, it doesn't matter what we do. It just works. But that's when you don't want to get comfortable either because right. you know, it's going well, but it could go even better. You know what I mean? It's, sure. it's understanding, especially the guy of that caliber, like a bad year of gains for him would be the best gains in all three of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It'd be like, oh shit, that's the best year of our life. And, and you'd miss the the boat with him if that's all he did. So yeah, it's definitely interesting. I, I find the same thing. It's a, all, a lot of coaching is, is knowing how to coach the individual. You know, I do have clients, I'm sure you do too, that you just tell them to stop being a pussy. And they have other clients that you like ninja your way around their feelings and yeah. make them warm and fuzzy to get the same end result. Right. One of my, I love, um, I mean, I love making comparisons to sports, but like Jimmy Johnson told a story, I think it was in his, uh, in his football life, but he talked about basically to convey the same message to Michael Irvin and and Emmett Smith on the same team for the same play. He had to come about it in two separate ways. You know, he Mm -hmm. said Michael Irvin, he literally could just get stuck right into him and, and Michael Irvin would receive that. If he got stuck right into Emmett Smith, Emmett Smith would run from that. Mm-hmm. You know, so like he's like, I, I literally had to find ways to communicate the same thing, but in a way that these guys would accept it. And that's I mean, that's coaching. And, you know, that's one of the best things I think that we can translate to bodybuilding is you have to learn how to communicate with these guys. What drives them? What initially brought them to bodybuilding? Was it 
lack of confidence? Was it something within their family? Was it their dad or, or their, a lack of father figure? You know, like knowing these things and then how to communicate through them, I really think it makes all the difference. For sure. That's like coaching. Yeah, that's real coaching. And I, Dusty and I were saying the other the other episode that, uh, you know, someone asked, how do I pick a coach? You know, I've got these three coaches that I can work with and, you know, they're all good and they're all, you know, blah, blah, blah. And my answer was, well, in that, you know, pick the one who cares the most, first of all. Yeah. Because they're going to, you know, be there for you. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And uh, so when you're when you're putting the time in to get to know your athletes the way you do, um, that's just what that breeds. Yeah. You know, that's <clears throat> the, that's where that's why they trust you. you right. Know? Right. And, and um, the thing is, that's a process. You know, I think mm-hmm. that's something that some new people coming to me don't understand is like. Ultimately, I want to know you very well, but we need to organically let that happen. You know, like I don't know people very well right off the bat, nor is my communication with them the best right off the bat, but it grows over time, just like any relationship. 